Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 3 of Zero to CSWP. My name is Lucas, and in this video we're going to be talking about configurations, variables, and patterns. Before the video gets started, I'm going to put a drawing up on screen. You can either try to create this part for yourself, or follow along with the start of the video. We're going to be using this part in the second half of the video, so be sure to have it. The part is a little more simple than what you'll see on the CSWP, but it's always good to practice creating parts. And with that out of the way, let's just get right into SOLIDWORKS. Let's create a new part inside of SOLIDWORKS. Since the dimensions are in millimeters, let's change the document unit to MMGS, or millimeters, grams, seconds. If we take a look at our drawings, we can see a few sections in which we can create features to represent. We have the bottom rectangular section, which we can use as a base, the angled cylinder connected by the rectangular section below it, the cutout profile, and the raised portion with its hole. Let's start by creating a sketch for our base. We can see the dimensions are 200 by 210 millimeters, so we'll create a rectangle and assign those. I'm not going to make the fillets in the corners, as it's good practice to leave fillets as features at the end of our drawing. We will talk about why we do this once we get there. Let's extrude the sketch 25 millimeters to complete our base feature. Next, we will create the angled cylindrical section. We can see that there is a center line that runs along the cylinder. We can create that as a sketch and then create a plane based off of the line. Let's create the line we need as a construction geometry, as it will only be used to create the plane. We can assign the dimensions given in the drawing to completely define our sketch. Once we have this, we can create a plane perpendicular to the line that we will use to extrude the circular section. Creating this plane, we can select our line and give a perpendicular relation. However, the plane would not be defined and cannot be created as it can be placed anywhere along the profile of our line. Since the position of the plane does not really matter relative to the profile of our line, let's just select the origin to bound the plane at the center of the part. We'll create two circles coincentric to each other and dimension the inside and the outside circle. First of all, in the listed dimensions we see an R symbol and a circle with a line through it. The R means radius, while the line with a circle means diameter. So make sure when entering dimensions to see if it wants the radius or diameter of the circle. The diameter is always double the radius, so we can add 15 mm diameter to the outside circle and a 25 mm diameter to the inside circle. Now let's use a vertical relation to bound the circle, along with a 75 mm dimension from the bottom of our base to the center of our circles to fully define our sketch. Now let's extrude our profile in both directions up to the surface of the base. A good thing to note in SOLIDWORKS is that there are almost always multiple ways of doing something. For example, we could have modeled the bottom connecting rectangular part in the sketch as well. But just to show there are multiple ways of doing this, let's do it a different way. Let's make a sketch on this face and extrude the rectangular section up to the cylinder. Let's create the sketch and simply create four lines with each corner on the edge of the part. Then we can add some parallel relations and add two 15mm dimensions between the center line and the outside lines, which adds up to 30mm, which is given in the drawing. Then let's extrude this and use the up to body end type. Make sure that merge entities checkbox is checked off, as by creating the cylinder in midair, the part became a multi body, meaning in effect there were multiple parts, or more specifically, multiple solid bodies in one part file. Using the Merge Entities checkbox, we'll merge these two multi-bodies and make it into a single solid body and a single part. We will cover this more in the next video, so don't be worried about the complexity of this. Now let's model the raised corner section. This is quite simple, just a corner rectangle dimensioned on each side with an extrusion. We can use the 15mm blind extrusion to make the 40mm listed dimension. Or, preferably, let's do an offset from surface extrusion of 40mm from the bottom surface to accurately represent the dimension in the drawing. Now let's add in the hole. We need a point to add this on, 
so let's sketch a quick point on the top face with the given dimensions. Then, let's open up the hole wizard to create our hole. Be sure to select everything that is noted. We know it's an ANSI metric hole, counter bore, hex bolt, normal fit, M12 through hole. So we can add all of this in the property manager and then under end type select either up to surface and select the bottom surface or through all. Now we can add in the last major feature. We can see that this needs an extruded cut that is offset from each edge of the face. To make it easier for us, let's create a sketch on this face and then select the face and convert the geometry. We can select all the lines we created and turn them into construction geometry. We can do this by clicking and holding and then dragging to select all lines and selecting construction geometry. Two things to note about the drag selection. First, we can either use a box or lasso selection, which we can change by right clicking and selecting either option. And as well to know the difference between blue and green selection boxes. The green box means that any entity with any part of it inside of the selection area will be selected, whereas the blue selection box requires the whole entity to be inside of the selection area. To get the blue box, drag your mouse to the right, and to get the green, drag to the left. Now let's offset this by 13 millimeters inwards. Again, let's leave the fillets till later. We can do an extruded cut offset from the bottom surface by 5 millimeters as per the drawing dimension. Now let's add in our fillets. We can see that there are seven that have a radius of five millimeters, which are the six inside of the cut and the one on the corner of the raised section. We can add these fillets in with the fillet feature. The next we can add the outside fillets that have a radius of 10 millimeters. Now that you have finished your part, you can save it with the save button. In the drawing I made, all of the listed dimensions were numeric. However, sometimes the dimension given will say something like A or B. Then in the dialog box, it will say A is equal to 210 millimeters or some measurement. This means that the exam will expect you to change this dimension later on in the exam. We could just assign the dimension which the letter represents, but this would be a poor idea, as we may forget to change it later in the exam, or the letter might be assigned in multiple places in a part. To fix this, we can use global equations and variables. To create a new variable, we can go into the equations tab, which we can access from the toolbar. If you don't have this toolbar, you can add it by right clicking, going to toolbars, and selecting tools. Then we can create a new variable. Let's call it width and give it a value of 200 millimeters. If you ever need to find a command in SolidWorks but you don't know where it is, go to the top right search area, select commands, and search for what you need. Then let's go into our first sketch we created. We can look where our 200 millimeter dimension is and double click to change it. If you just type in quotations width, it will give the value of the variable. But if we want the dimension to change as we update the variable in the equations tab, we can type equals and then the variable. As well, if we do equals, we can select it from the global variable list under the dimension input box. Now the variable is linked. And if we go into our table, we can change the value which changes the part size. Let's go back into our sketch and look at the 210 millimeter dimension. We can double click and create a new global variable simply by typing in equals and then in quotes our variable name. We will call it length and in the equation table it is now added. Now let's talk about patterns. There are patterns that alter features and ones that alter sketches. Let's create a quick sketch just to show the sketch patterns. Let's create two lines to quickly show the different patterns. The mirror takes selected entities and mirrors them over a selected line. The linear pattern takes selected entities 
and spaces them out along the x, y, or direction of your choice. And the circular axis takes entities and rotates them around a selected point. Of course, with the linear and circular pattern, there are many properties that allow you to fully define them, but the most important to note is always the number of instances and the dimension, either in a length or rotation. The same goes for pattern features. We have mirror, linear, and circular, with the other pattern features not relevant to the CSWP exam. For example, let's mirror the raised corner end hole across the right plane. We can see that the feature is created. However, there is an issue. The outside fillet was not created. To figure out how to solve this, we need to know two things. First, the feature manager design tree acts like a timeline, with things happening in order as you go down. Since the fillet happens before the mirror, it does not see the mirror and the fillet for it cannot be created. And secondly, parent-child relations. The fillet is a child feature to the parent feature, which is the original base. A parent-child relationship just means the parent feature is needed for the child feature to exist. There can be many children features for one parent feature and many parent features for one child feature. Now that we know this, we can simply drag the fillet underneath the mirror, which means the mirror becomes a parent feature to the fillet and the fillet feature properly rounds the corner as it can now see the mirror. Now I'm gonna put a drawing on screen. Using what you know, try and create this sketch using global variables and equations. What should be able to happen is when you change the number of instances, the degree of rotation of the circular pattern changes. So that if you change the instances from four to six, the sketch would change from this to this. Note that variables can be made in the form of equations. For example, you can do a variable equal to a number divided by a different variable. You would use the backslash for division. And lastly, let's talk about configurations. Configurations allow you to have different variations of a part inside one part file. For example, you can have different features active or inactive, known as suppressed or unsuppressed, and different values for different global variables. We can create a new configuration by going to the configurations manager, right-clicking the part, and selecting the new configuration. We will name it test. We can suppress the most recent feature we made and change some variables in this configuration to show the functionality of configurations. Then if we swap between configurations by double clicking in the configuration manager, we can see the variations inside the same part file. Thanks for watching that video. I really hope you learned something. In the next video, we're going to be doing more practice and then we're going to be looking at tools. For example, measuring distances, uh, surface areas, and mass properties. For example, figuring out the volume or mass of your part after you apply a material, which we'll also be looking at. After that, we'll go into more reference geometry as I couldn't get into it in this video. And then a little bit about multi-bodies, which you might see on the CSWP exam as well. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe for more SolidWorks related content, and with that out of the way, I'll see you in the next video.